Hi everyone, this is Teacher Rafael, and today I will be discussing about performance assessment, its definition, characteristics, strengths, and limitations. So what is performance assessment? According to Lane, as cited in Macmillan 2018, performance assessment is an assessment approach that involves a student's demonstration of a skill or competency in creating a product, constructing a response, or making a presentation. In other words, in performance assessment, rather than answering questions or choosing an answer from alternatives given, students are required to exhibit their knowledge and skills or the extent of their learning through performing a task or producing a product. Also, Performance assessment is a multi-step assessment with clear criteria, expectations, and processes that measure how well a student transfers knowledge and applies complex skills to create or refine an original product. And there are two types of performance assessment. We have process-oriented performance-based assessment, which is concerned with the actual task performance rather than the output of the activity. Examples are playing piano or guitar, delivering a speech on stage, or demonstration teaching. Product-oriented performance-based assessment, on the other hand, focuses on evaluating student learning through tangible outputs or products that they create. Here, the emphasis on the, is the application of knowledge and skills to produce real-world products or artifacts, such as video, short story, collage, or brochure. So what's the difference among performance assessment, alternative assessment, and authentic assessment? Performance assessment involves a student's demonstration of a skill or competency in creating a product, constructing a response, or making a presentation. While alternative assessment refers to any method that differs from conventional paper and pencil tests, most particularly objective tests. So examples of alternative assessments include observations, exhibitions, oral presentations, experiments, portfolios, interviews, and projects. So we can say that performance assessments are also alternative assessments. Authentic assessment, on the other hand, involves the direct examination of a student's ability to use knowledge or skills to perform a task that is like what is encountered in real life or in the real world. So authentic tasks are either replicas of the kinds of problems faced by adult citizens or professionals in the field. For example, a practice teacher or student teacher may, assign, may design a lesson plan or may perform a demonstration teaching. So this replicates the tasks that, may do, that they may do in the future as professional teachers. So we can say that an authentic assessment is both performance and alternative assessments. But not all authentic assessments are performance-based or alternative assessment. So we can only say that an assessment is authentic if the task is re replicates or replicates the the one that is encountered in the real life or in the real world. So what are the characteristics of an effective performance assessment? So in performance assessment, students explain, justify, and defend. For example, when a student performs an experiment, he tests the hypothesis and explains his findings. Also, Students use reasoning skills in performance assessment. Students' reasoning skills are called upon during the analysis, evaluation, and creation of their performances and outputs, 
and in taking a position based on a current discourse. Moreover, performance assessment, students use engaging ideas of importance and substance. Teachers use performance assessment to encourage creative, student-led approaches and activities that engage and motivate the students. Furthermore, there's typically no single correct answer in performance assessment. The students can demonstrate their answers in many forms. Others can demonstrate their learning through posters, some through videos, and others through oral presentations. By carefully identifying the criteria of good performance ahead of time, teachers can still make comparable judgments of student performances. Also, performance assessment requires sustained work for the teachers. The work of the teacher in performance assessment does not end with construction of assessment plan or scoring rubric. It also extends to its implementation and interpretation of the results of student performance. On the other hand, performance assessment use clear criteria and rubrics for scoring. This will make the scoring of students' performance more objective. And lastly, in performance assessment, students perform, create, construct, produce, or do something. And those are the characteristics of an effective performance assessment. Now we go to the strengths and limitations of performance assessment. When the assessments are tied to real world challenges and situations, students are better prepared for such thinking and reasoning outside of school. In this way, the assessments influence the instruction to be more meaningful and practical. Students value the task more because they view it as rich rather than superficial, engaging rather than uninteresting, and active rather than passive. For these reasons, there are many significant advantages or strengths in using performance assessments. The first one is that students are given opportunity to demonstrate their learning in different way. So according to Macmillan 2018, performance assessments are better suited to measure complex thinking targets when compared to selected response tests like multiple choice or simple constructed response tests like fill in the blanks. Students who traditionally do not perform well on paper and pencil tests have an opportunity to demonstrate their learning in different ways. So some may, may demonstrate their learning through posters, some through oral presentations. And second, performance assessments result in better understanding of students' skills by the teacher and a keener knowledge of the topic by the students themselves. Because students perform, create, construct, or produce something, teachers are able to understand more the extent of students' learning. And the students have a keener knowledge of the topic by themselves because they, have, they, have, they become active participants in their own learning. Third one or third strength of performance assessment is that in performance assessments, students learn to evaluate their own performance through self-assessment. In performance assessments, multiple specific criteria for judging success are identified. For example, in making portfolio, criteria as reflected in the rubric may include selection of work, analysis of reflections, and timeliness. When these criteria are shared with students before the assessment, the students can use them as they learn. In this way, students learn how to evaluate their own performance. They learn to reflect on their strengths and weaknesses through self-assessment. They learn how to ask questions and in many assessments, learn how to work effectively with others. 
Finally, performance assessment motivates educators to explore the purposes and processes of schooling. Because of the nature of the assessments, teachers revisit or reflect on their learning goals or instructional practices and standards. They explore how students will use their classroom more differently, classroom time um, differently, and whether there are adequate resources for all students. Now we go to the limitations of performance assessment. The limitations of using performance assessment lie in three areas. Reliability, sampling, and time. For reliability, unfortunately, performance assessments are subject to considerable measurement error, which lowers reliability or precision. Like essay items, the major source of measurement error with performance assessment is with scoring. Because scoring requires professional judgment, usually by only one person, there will be variations and error due to bias and other factors. Although procedures exist that can min minimize scoring errors, such as the use of scoring rubrics or other carefully constructed criteria, reliability is still questionable or is likely to be lower when compared to written tests and other similar type of assessments, such as selected response formats. Second is with sampling. Because it takes considerable time for students to do performance assessments, you will have to relatively, you will have relatively few samples of student proficiency. Furthermore, we know that the performance on one task may not provide a very good estimate of student success on other tasks. In other words, that if you intend to use the results of performance assessment to form conclusions about students' capability, you need to accumulate information from multiple tasks. Rather than basing the score or mark of the student on a single performance or output, we can have many and varied outputs or performances. The third limitation is with the use of time. It is very time consuming for teachers to con construct good tasks, develop scoring criteria and rubrics, administer the task and observe students, and then apply the rubrics to score the performance or product. For example, in student performances like giving a speech, adequate time is needed for the teacher to score each student performance. Second, it is difficult to interact with all students and give them meaningful feedback as they learn and make decisions considering you may have a number of students. And third one, it is difficult to estimate the amount of time students will need to complete performance tasks, especially if the task is one you haven't used previously with them and if students are unaccustomed to the format and or expectations with regard to the given task. So the key points that you have to remember is that in contrast with paper and pencil tests, performance assessment requires students to construct an original response, either performance or product, to a task that is scored with teacher judgment. Also, effective performance assessment should engage students in meaningful activities that enhance their thinking skills and demonstrate their ability to apply what they have learned. And the limitations of using performance assessment lie in three areas, which are reliability or precision, sampling, and time. 
So that ends our discussion on performance assessment, its definition, characteristics, strengths, and limitations. And here are the references used for this video. Also, the references for the sources of images used in this video. So thank you for listening and watching this video. Hope this helps. Stay safe and healthy always. And see you in my next videos.